Hello and welcome to Lore of the Cards, the series that looks to help you discover the lore hidden within your Hearthstone deck. I'm really late to the party here, but it's high time we started uncovering the lore of the League of Explorers adventure. Having only just bought it and done the first wing, I'll take what I think is the coolest lore from that wing before moving on and playing the next. The sooner I get done with the lore, the sooner I can play the next wing. That should get me working quicker. So. Why don't we start with the very first ancient ruin that we investigate with the foolhardy explorer, Reno Jackson, the Temple of Orsis. The League of Explorers adventure is the first that doesn't theme every wing around a dungeon already established in World of Warcraft. While the temple is not a dungeon, it can still be found within WoW in the settlement of Orsis. The city is located in the mysterious lands of Uldum which was only recently discovered by the denizens of Azeroth. Bran Bronzebeard once searched for this lost region that was said to contain a city of the Titans, the beings that shaped Azeroth. Bran searched every corner of the Tanaris Desert, but his investigation was fruitless. Bran suspected one of two scenarios, either Aldum was buried deep beneath the sands, or over many years it had been confused for the caverns of time home of the bronze dragonflight. Bran's theories proved to be incorrect when the mad black dragon aspect Deathwing returned to Azeroth. This caused a cataclysmic event that would forever reshape the lands of Azeroth. While much was destroyed, new life and new discoveries lay in the wake of Deathwing's destruction. One of these discoveries was Uldum. The region had been hidden by a titan cloaking device, which Deathwing's arrival had damaged, allowing for the new discovery. It would later be revealed that the entire region of Uldum was a weapon to be used to cleanse Azeroth if the Titans deemed it necessary. One of the only races to reside in Uldum before the Cataclysm were the Tolvir, centaur-like catmen made of stone, created by the Titans to watch over their machinery and repositories on Azeroth. Those in Uldum were to safeguard the area's secrets. The race was later afflicted by the Curse of Flesh, created by enemies of the Titans, the Old Gods. The curse turned stone to flesh and blood, and made races more susceptible to the Old Gods' corruption. We'll be covering the Tolvir in greater depth in a future episode. The Tolvir were split into several tribes, and the Orsis tribe made their home in Orsis. The tribe controlled the western region of Uldum and lived in peace with the others. Until Deathwing came, with the mighty elemental lord Alakir as his lackey. The aspect of death approached each of the Tolvir tribes and offered to return them to their stronger stone forms. In return, Deathwing demanded their loyalty. He first approached the Nefeset tribe, who greedily accepted the dragon's offer, not caring that the Leviathan sought to destroy Azeroth. When Deathwing came to the Orsis tribe, they saw through his generous offer and declined. In his rage, Deathwing decided to make an example of them, sending Alakir to destroy them. The Windlord summoned a potent hurricane that smothered Orsis in sand. Tolvir were crushed and suffocated. Alakir sent his minions to patrol the ruined settlement, killing any that had managed to survive his wrath. The attack on Orsis occurred before any adventurers came to investigate Uldum, so the temple itself was unable to be explored, its entrance buried deep within the sand. Most of the Orsis tribe were wiped out in this savage attack, though a few survivors remained. Itesh was taken prisoner with several others by the Windlord and helped adventurers assault part of his domain, the Vortex Pinnacle. Itesh escaped his captors, but they were not worried about chasing him down, as he could not escape the Pinnacle. Vortex Pinnacle consisted of several platforms high up in the air with no visible way of getting down. Guided by Itesh, the heroes were able to avenge those killed in Orsis slaying the Jinn Asad, who gave the order to attack the settlement. General Amantep was not in Orsis when it was buried, and was the closest thing the tribe now had to a leader. He enlisted the aid of heroes to save as many partially buried Tolvir as they could, and 
find the prophet Hadassi, the wisest and eldest member of the tribe. Hadassi told the heroes of the scepter of Orsis, an artifact that his clan are bound by an oath to protect. With his final words, the prophet told the heroes the scepter could not fall into the hands of the wind elementals that still prowled round the settlement. The heroes discovered the chest containing the scepter, but were unable to open it. Looking at images depicted on a plaque above the chest, the heroes concluded that two giant constructs must be destroyed. This gained them two stones, the stone of the moon and the stone of the sun, with which to open the chest. The scepter in hand, the heroes were able to bring it to Amantep, thwarting any plans Alakir may have had for the artifact. The tragedy at Orsis inspired other Tolvir tribes to join the battle against Deathwing and the Nefeset tribe. After Deathwing's defeat, it appears that the ruins of Orsis are now clear to explore. Elise Starseeker has discovered a part of the Staff of Origination within the settlement's temple, and Reno Jackson is the man for the job. So, there you have it, the lore surrounding the Temple of Orsis. Looking a little at the region surrounding it, what happened to it, and a few notable Tolvir to come from the settlement. I really hope you enjoyed. There was so much less to cover there than in the Ronin episode. Makes a nice and refreshing change. Next time, we'll be looking at the Jinn, the race to which Zinar and the Genie of Zephyrs belong to. If you've enjoyed this episode, liking, subscribing and sharing are beyond appreciated. It really does mean a lot. Of course, if you're the type of guy to commit genocide via sand, then go ahead and hit the dislike button. All the artists I could find are credited in the description below. Before we totally sign off today, I was approached by a viewer, Madman, you might have seen him in the comments every now and then, who wants to organise a little Hearthstone tournament and wanted me to give it a shout out. If you're interested at all, the details are in the description and I hope you guys at least give it a look. Until next time guys, happy Hearthstoning and I'll see you for more Lore of the Cards.